The senses about things we see, we smell, we hear, we feel. Look at that eye. Coated in a film of tears. There's the cornea, aqueous humor, the lens. It's going to change every time we look at something. Retina in the back to receive the image. All these senses are truly amazing. Let's take a look at them. Taste. Key word here is gustatory, which means taste. There are these microvilli. If you look at the far right, these are little tiny hairs that are for detecting some some flavors. Olfactory means smell. You can see that huge sinus. And that's why when we get sinus infections, my gosh, it's often a problem. There is the olfactory epithelium, where the nasal cavity, the, the there's bone up here, of course, and the olfactory bulb is going to send that reception of odor to the brain. The eye. We looked at this at the beginning. Cornea on the outside, fastest growing tissue in the body. In fact, you scratch it, and minutes later, the blurriness is, is, is gone, and you can see again. It's protective. The iris is controlled by the choroid. So let's just look at the choroid first. Choroid is this layer. It's a middle layer that absorbs straight light. But in the front of the eye, it becomes this pigmented iris. So if your eyes are blue or brown, let's do the iris. And then the iris is going to create an um, opening here called the pupil. So if someone walks into the room, someone who you love, then that pupil is going to expand. So you get him more information. Or if the lights go out, the pupil is going to also increase in diameter. You're going to gather as much information as you can. In front of here is the aqueous humor filled with water. Sclera on the outside, that's the white of the eye, that's protective. In the back, the cornea is where we have rods. And if you've ever noticed that you know black and white photography is really quite amazing because our rods are so abundant. Have you ever looked at a something in the uh, light of the moon? Maybe the a movie star, and you see her red lips, but they look black. Ooh, kind of creepy. That's because your rods are really busy at night. Cones don't help you much in dim light. The cones are just in this little pocket here called the fovea centralis. Those are for color vision. Vitreous humor is this middle part here filled with a gelatinous kind of material that keeps that lens from going back into the eye. Ciliary muscles, there's that choroid again. It's going to pull on the lens and change its shape. And as we get older, that lens gets harder and harder, and soon we need glasses. Everyone, if they live long enough, is going to need glasses because the lens hardens. I mentioned that film coat of protective enzymes on the outside of the eye. Nearsightedness doesn't mean that you can't see things near. It just means the image is focused in front of the retina. Often the eye is really long, the eyeball, and so we need a concave lens to, to uh, correct that. Farsightedness it doesn't mean anything about far objects. It just means that the image is focused too far past the retina, and that's also sometimes because of a short eyeball, and we use a convex lens to correct that. Stigmatism, our world is not perfect, and neither is our cornea. And so often we have an irregular surface uh, eyeglass to correct for irregularities in the cornea. The outer ear, we often think people call the ear the outer ear, but really the outer ear is just the pinna. There's an auditory ear canal and ceruminous glands, wax. Uh, wax is, is really uh, amazing. It's uh, protective, has antibiotic properties. But people don't respect it. Um, you got to chew tough food sometimes, right? When you go into a senior center, they're eating soft, mushy kinds of food, sweet stuff. No, no, we got to be eating tough things like big, thick carrots or chew on that gristle of steak, and that will slough off the wax so that it just comes off naturally. We don't want to go in there with a Q-tip or anything else, uh, hydrogen peroxide, all these things people use. Just chew. Chew like crazy, and generally that wax will be sloughed off. The tympanum I, I mentioned here is the eardrum, and the ossicles of the bone, uh, I'm sorry, the ossicles of the ear are here, malleus. 
the mallet, incus, which is the anvil, and the stapes, which pushes against the oval window. And here is that cochlea, which is uh, the uh, middle ear, excuse me, inner ear. The middle ear is here, and pressure is equalized through the eustachian tube. Now, sometimes a child, their jaw has not expanded yet, so the eustachian tube is fairly vertical, so fluids back up in here. Or sometimes the, uh, the tube is just too narrow, and, and so they get a lot of ear infections, and then they get to a certain age, ear infections are done. Take a look at this nice little review, if I can get it up here. There it is. It's going to go through some of the um, actions I've talked about. And while this is guy is getting to where we're at, let's look at the organ of Corti here. There's a tectoral membrane to the right. Okay, we're just going to have to look to the left. Okay, look at that. Tympanum, yes. Malleus, incus, stapes, tiny bones within the middle ear. And there's that um, eustachian tube going down. Here is the cochlea. Now, if we zoom ahead just a little bit, we'll get a look at this cochlea. Here it is. A slice of the cochlea, you'll see there's the organ of corti. And there's the stereocilia, sometimes called the base of the cilia, that transfer the impulses. So it's like a violin uh, playing across there. 100 decibels is not that loud, guys. So music, of course, chainsaw. Loud car engine, lots of other things um, can cause it. And look to the upper right. That's what it looks like. And you can't repair that. Okay. Once this is damaged, it's permanent. And you're looking at some kind of hearing aid. So I carry these little flesh-colored foam earplugs. I cut them in half so they don't stick out. I don't want to look like a nerd. And if I'm expecting loud noise, I just pop those in. It's real handy. Rotational equilibrium. This is when you say no. You're moving head side to side. These semicircular canals have hair cells called stereocilia. And, and then there's gel-like cupula. And it's going to move when we move our head. And that's how we know we're saying no. <laughs> now, if you want to say yes, that's a different set of that's gravitational equilibrium. Those we have the zotolith membranes. You can see these tiny stones. And when we go up and down, then the stereocilia on the tips of these hair cells are going to tell us our head is going up and down. Now you might think, of course, of course I know that. But people with vertigo have problems with um, the stereocilia, uh, either semicircular or in the otoliths, and they sometimes have to be positioned in different ways to get all of this back into equilibrium. Infections, meningitis, uh, caused by fungi, vi viruses, bacteria, they're going to affect that tough meninges that surrounds the central nervous system. It's a leading cause of mental retardation, especially children under four, because the brain has nowhere to go. When there's inflammation in there, the uh, cranium encloses it, so we have enormous amount of pressure. Leprosy, we don't see this too much anymore. It's caused by a mycobacterium, a very small group of organisms. I've seen it in Nepal and in Kenya. Uh, it's treatable though. The sensory neurons are gradually destroyed. So if you look at the diagram, sensory are the ones that detect a stimulus. So these people just can't feel anything. They get a, a stone in their shoe, and you or I would pull the stone out. These guys just keep walking because they don't sense the pain. And so damage occurs because they're unaware of the injury or infection because those receptors are dead. Polio, mostly eradicated through uh, vaccines. You know, I line up for vaccines any time I can. Um, they're amazing, wonderful. Uh, some of the most greatest discoveries in science are vaccines. Polio is caused by a polio virus, contaminated soil and water. It's going to attack the motor neurons, so very different than leprosy. In this case, the impulses from the brain don't reach the target tissue, so we have paralysis. Rabies, yeah, I've had three rabies vaccines. So um, I'm on to this. Hey, you should never let an animal lick your skin because you don't know where that animal's been. You don't know the state of its health. Um, so bites or licking, it's going to constrict the throat, and you get this buildup of mucus. And sometimes in the movies they exaggerate this. Guys walk along with foam coming out of his mouth. No, 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 no. Just a little bit of dribble. Uh, it affects the brain tissue, and so that swelling causes madness because, again, the brain has nowhere to go. 
TSE, I'd rather just say TSE than transmissible fun spongiform encephalopathy, uh, also called mal cow disease. These are tiny proteins, smaller than uh, viruses, and they're going to create these plaques, and, and the plaques then result in holes, spaces in the brain, and the brain doesn't <laughs> can't function with holes. Okay, these prions are yeah infectious proteins, and they're highly resistant. Uh, don't be concerned though. Um, prions are and they're widespread, but um, we are very thorough with our bovine bovine industry, and uh, our our beef is is safe at least for now as of this lecture. <laughs> Let's hope it stays that way. A little review here. Just take a look at some of the keywords. More of the same. And finally, some of the diseases. All right, nervous system. Thank goodness we have it, huh?